We're going to look at SignalR and build an app where we send a message and receive a message back from the server in real time. To begin with, we need to create a SignalR hub in our ASP.NET Core app. So in the hubs folder that we've created, we'll add a new class, which we're going to call Chat Hub. We need to inherit the hub class, which we can get from Microsoft.ASP.NETCore.SignalR. So we need to import that into the class. Then we're going to override the onConnected async method and send the message to all clients every time a client is connected. So to do that, we call await, we get clients.all, and we call the send async method. We're going to pass in a method name of receive message. And the message we're going to add is received the message. Another connection has been added. We're also going to set up another method. So market public async. Turn a type of task. We're going to call it send message and we're going to pass in message as a parameter. And now this time we're going to send the message to a particular client. So to do that, every client that's connected has a connection ID. In order to do that, we call clients.client. And to get the connection ID, we call context.connection ID. Then we can add our send async method. We use the same method name, so receive message. And the message that we're going to add this time is received the message. And then we'll pass in the message parameter into the string. We need to add signal R to our services and also map our chat hub. We go into program.cs and we call builder.services.addSignalR. And to map the chat hub, we call app.maphub. We pass in our chat hub class as a generic type and we need to give it a pattern or an endpoint. So we're going to call it slash chat hub. This will import the round the code.signalr.hub's namespace because that's the namespace where the chat hub lives. We've built the back end, now we need to integrate it into the front end by sending a message to SignalR and receiving a message back from the server in real time. This is how the front end will work. We'll input a message and press this button. This will send a message to the server and we'll receive a response back. If we have a look at the HTML, we're referencing the bootstrap file. This is where we're inputting the message and sending it. We're going to store all the messages as bullet points. We're referencing the JavaScript SignalR file, and we've also got our own custom SignalR file. We then need to connect to our chat hub. So we open up the SignalR custom file, and we create a new connection as a constant. So we call new SignalR.hub connection builder with a URL of slash chat hub. So we go into program.cs. That's the URL that's represented here. Then we call configure login. I'm going to do it at information level, which we do by calling signalr.loglevel.information. And then we build the connection. Next, we need to start the connection. So we'll create that in a method. We'll mark it as asynchronous. We'll wrap it around a try catch block. So to start it, we call await connection.start. And we're going to output a message to the console saying that SignalR is connected. We're going to catch any errors and we're going to output that to the console as well. Call console.log and just input the error as part of the log. And then we're going to set a timeout. We're going to recall the start method after 5000 milliseconds. Now to start the connection, we need to call the method of start that will start it for us. And if we ever get disconnected, we want to restart it as well. So when we get disconnected, the connection to on close is called. So we'll mark that as async. And we'll just call the start method. If we open up developer tools, let's see if the SignalR connection has been established. So we go into the console, we can see that SignalR is connected. We've now established a connection to the chat hub on the server. The next task is to send a message. To send a message to the server, we're going to set up a new method, call it send message, we'll mark it as asynchronous, and we're going to pass in message as a parameter. And this will invoke the connection. So we call it connection.invoke. It will 
invoke the send message method and we'll pass up the message. So if we go into our chat hub, this represents this method here. So it's passing in the message as the parameter and then sending it to that particular client based on that connection ID. And it's sending it to a receive message method with that message as well as some additional text. Now, if we go into index.html, the button has got an ID of send message and the message that we're inputting in has got an ID of message. So we call document.getElement by ID send message. I'm going to add an event listener of click. Mark it as asynchronous. We'll get the message by calling document.getElement by ID and the ID is message. We'll do a check and make sure the message exists and if it has a value. We'll call the send message method that we just created and we'll pass in the message dot value. And then we'll reset the value in the message. We've sent the message. Now we want to receive a message from SignalR and output it to the web application. To do that, we call connection dot on and we pass in a method name of receive message. So if we go back into the chat hub. This represents the method name that is set here and also in here. We've also got a parameter that we need to pass in of message. So once again, back in the chat hub, this is the message that's stored here as the parameter and also here. Now we're going to get the messages by calling document.getElementById then the ID is messages. So if we go into the index.html, this represents the bullet points for the messages where we're going to store each message. Now, assuming that it exists, we're going to create a new element. We'll call it bullet point. And we'll call document.createElement of li. We'll call bullet point .inner text, And we'll just add the message. Then we'll add the bullet point to our messages. So we call messages.append child with the bullet point. Running the application, we've already received a message from SignalR saying another connection has been added. That is because we're overriding the unconnected async and we're sending a message to all clients saying receive the message, another connection has been added. Let's now send a message that sent ABCD. We've received a response saying receive the message ABCD. That is calling the same message with the message as the parameter and then it's passing it to that particular connection ID, calling the receive message method and passing in that message. Let's open up another browser. So once again, we're getting the message back saying another connection has been added and it's also been added to this one as well. Let's send another message of XYZ on the second browser. We've received the message there, but we haven't received it on here and that's because it's specific to that connection ID. We've also integrated Stripe into a .NET application using JavaScript. And if you want to know more about that, watch this video next. And if you want to download the code example for this tutorial, you can go to roundthecode.com examples. There's also a link for it in the YouTube video description.